Welcome to New Hope Online. Let's take our Bibles and turn to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 16. And if you have your iPod or iPad or your Android tablet or whatever you use to read and study the Bible, let's open them up to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 16, verses 3 through 7. The title of my message today is, Give People What They Need, and that is the Triple a treatment. Give people what they need, and that is the triple A treatment. I love the story of Johnny. Johnny was just a little boy, and it was time for him to go to bed. And he said, Mommy, I'm scared. And his mommy replied, Johnny, everything's going to be okay. Jesus will be sleeping with you. And Johnny responded, But Mommy, I need someone with skin on. Now, there's an element of truth in that little story. We all need people to surround ourselves with skin on. Romans chapter 16, verses 3 through 7, here's what it says. It says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Now, this was a husband and wife team, and they were of a tremendous asset to the Apostle Paul, and establishing churches uh, in the area. They also were tent makers, as was the Apostle Paul. And look what he says about this couple, who have for my life laid down their own necks, upon whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Ephanatus, who is the first fruits of Arcadia unto Christ, Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andronicus and Juna, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the Gentiles, or they were a big deal among the apostles who also were in Christ Jesus before me. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, we need you in this hour as I give this message. I pray that you would come. I pray that you would anoint the lips of your servant as we open up the sacred pages of the scriptures. I pray, Lord, that uh, people who are watching this message today uh, would remove all distractions from them so that they can give 100% attention uh, to this very important message found in the book of Romans. And Lord, for all you do, we will give you praise, for I pray with a grateful heart in Jesus' name, amen. I'm convinced today, folks, that people need the AAA treatment. You may not know what that really means, but I will share with you exactly what that means in the message today. So listen up and pay attention. Grab a piece of paper and a piece of uh, a pen or so, and I'll follow along. If you have an extended detailed outline, uh, you can follow along as well on that. I want to talk to you today about giving people the triple A treatment. Now way back in the 1950s, I liked to uh, watch back then the uh, NBA basketball games. I was quite a sports fan in those years, but uh, today, sad to say, I'm not much of a sports fan any longer because it all seems to have become uh, political. And so, but back in the 1950s, before everything was political correct, I really enjoyed watching the Boston Celtics play. They had Bill Russell, uh, Kevin McHale, um, they had uh, Bob Cousy, uh, but uh, at this particular time, Casey Jones uh, was uh, signed to replace the retiring Bob Cousy. After his playing days were over, he later became the coach of the Boston Celtics, a very successful coach, by the way. He had a player on his team um, by the name of Kevin McHale. Now, Kevin McHale uh, noticed that the great coach, Casey Jones, and he noticed that every time he made the winning basket and that won the game, 
He never said a word. The coach never said a word. And uh, when they lost the game, Kevin McHale noticed that Coach Jones would come up to him and uh, he would tell McHale to get over it, keep your head lifted up high, tomorrow's another day, uh, so we'll play another game, so let's just keep going. Everything is going to be okay. And somehow, Casey Jones was there when he shot the ball and missed, and the Celtics lost. But when he made the winning basket and the team won, Casey Jones uh, wasn't around. And so finally, uh, Kevin McHale uh, went up to uh, the coach and uh, said, Coach, I don't quite understand. Whenever I shoot the ball and we win the game, you're not around. But when I shoot the ball and it doesn't go in the basket and we lose the game, you're one of the very first people to come to my side. So why do you do that? And Coach Jones said, well, Kevin, when you hit the game-winning shot, you have 15,000 fans cheering you on. And he said, Kevin, when you make the game-winning shot, uh, you have the reporters running to your side with a microphone in their hand. And he said, Kevin, when you make the winning shot, you have 12 players surrounding you and giving you the high fives and the hugs. But he said, Kevin, when you miss the shot and you lose the game, you feel like you don't have a friend in the world and you are the loneliest man on earth. And he said, I know at that time, that's when you need a friend. That's when you need someone to show you compassion more so than at any other time. Now let me tell you something, folks. If you live long enough, I can promise you this. There will come a time in your life when you will need someone to show you some compassion. There will come a time in your life when you will need someone just to love you unconditionally. And if there ever was a man in the Bible who was loved, loved by the Christian church, I think it was the Apostle Paul. In our text verses that we read here in Romans chapter 16, verses 3 through 4, it literally talks about Priscilla and Aquila and how they put their necks on the line for the Apostle Paul. And if you read in the book of Acts, where Paul left the church at Ephesus, he was leaving and he was resigning the church. I read about this pastor who uh, got up and uh, he said that he was going to resign his church. And this is what he said. He said, my friend Jesus led me here to this church. He said, my friend Jesus was with me all through my ministry here uh, in this church. But he said, now my friend Jesus is leading me away and I must resign. And he said, we're going to sing a song as we close this service. And the worship leader got up and led the congregation in a song, what a friend we have in Jesus. But that wasn't the case with the Apostle Paul. The Bible tells us that when he left the church at Ephesus, it said they wept sore and literally they fell on his neck and kissed him. So as I studied the life of the Apostle Paul over the years, as a matter of fact, when I was in college at Warner Pacific College, I took a course in Pauline epistles. And I wondered, why did the people love the Apostle Paul so much? And whenever I study the Bible, I always ask the why questions. So what was that in Paul's life that endeared him to people to the extent 
that they loved him and they wept when he resigned the church at Ephesus. I came to this conclusion. People loved Paul because Paul loved people. People loved Paul because Paul loved people. People love people who love people. I've said this 101 times and then some over the years. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People don't care how much you know until they know how much they care. People love people because they love people who love people. And Paul penned the book of Romans. He was actually at Corinth. He hadn't been to Rome yet. And when he wrote this book, he addressed, listen to this, he addressed 27 different people. Because Paul understood something. That a lot of business people haven't learned. Some say, well, I'm in the tire business, or I'm in the banking business, or I'm in the jewelry business. Folks, that's not exactly correct. All of us are in the people business. We are in the people business. It's all about people. Without people sitting in the pews of a church, or sitting in the chairs in a church, there's no need for a pastor. Great preachers, I'm convinced, don't build great churches. But I believe that great churches build great preachers. I learned a long time ago, folks, I'm not an eagle in a hummingbird's nest. But I am a hummingbird in an eagle's nest. What really matters in life, folks, is people. It's all about people. And here's what blew my circus as I studied the life of the Apostle Paul. I began to think, how did the Apostle Paul give people what they really needed, and that is triple A treatment? How did he do it? What can we learn from the Apostle Paul? I discovered that there are three things that the Apostle Paul did that we all can learn from in our own relational world on how to treat people and how to really love people. The first thing I want you to see about Paul is Paul acknowledged people. Paul acknowledged people. If you look at Romans chapter 16, he addressed 27 different people. You know what I've learned about people over these long years of pastoring and relating with people? All people need to be acknowledged. All people need to be acknowledged. Mary Kay Ash was correct when she said, we've all got this invisible necklace around our necks and it says, make me feel good about myself. Make me feel good about myself. 1980 in Crowley, Louisiana, in the Walmart store, they were having a lot of shoplifting. And the manager, who was the lady, said, I believe I have an idea that will deter the shoplifting in this store. She said, I'm going to put somebody at the front door. I'm going to put a greeter at the front door, and I think this will deter shoplifting. Uh, in our store. Well, one day Sam Walton walked into this Walmart store and the greeter was there at the door and they greeted him and they said, Welcome to Walmart. Now, I don't know how you respond when the greeter says to you, Welcome to Walmart. Uh, why don't we say, Well, I'm glad to be here uh, or thanks or whatever. But uh, Sam Walton was so impacted when he walked into this store and this lady had an idea to deter shoplifting in that store 
And so she put this greeter in the store and Sam Walton was greeted by the store uh, manager who put the greeter there and he said, I like this idea. And so from that point on, when you walk into a Walmart store, you will find a greeter there. Welcome to Walmart. Stan, uh, Sam Walton really liked that idea. He realized something. All people need to be acknowledged. All people want to be acknowledged. I want to be acknowledged. You want to be acknowledged. We all want to be acknowledged. So, the question is, how do we acknowledge people? Here's the good news that you can use. You know, the Bible is a practical book. It has a, a self-help techniques throughout its pages. And so here's good news that you can use. How do we acknowledge people? Number one, Paul tells us how we can acknowledge people by name. We can acknowledge people by name. I mean, look at these names, folks. Andronicus, Tryphena, Tryphosa. I mean, this wasn't Jim and John, you know. These are some very tough names to remember, but Paul acknowledged everybody by name because he understood what 3 John verse 14 says, chapter 1 says, verse 14, greet the friends by name. Do you remember the television show way back when, uh, Cheers? Now, I never, never watched Cheers, but I like the opening song that was played. And here are the lyrics. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see the troubles are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. So how do we acknowledge people? We acknowledge people by name. You say, well, I can't remember names. That's really difficult for me. I bet you 10 to 1. You can remember the name of the guy that owes you $500 and hasn't paid you back for a long time. You can remember his name. I bet you 10 to 1. Folks, we can remember names if we really want to and work at it. So Paul said, you acknowledge people by name. But there's a second way Paul said we acknowledge people, and that is by embracing. Look what he said in Romans chapter 16, verse 16. He said, salute one another with a holy kiss. Now hold it, wait a minute, man, I don't need that. Got it? Mary Ann says, women... Listen up. He doesn't need that. But that was the culture at that time. It would be the equivalent today of a handshake. Or it would be the equivalent today of a, an appropriate hug. I read about this pastor who was counseling a couple. And they came in and sat down in his office. And the woman was very dejected. Very despondent. And so halfway through the session, the pastor got up, went over. And uh, he asked uh, the couple to stand. And so they stood. And the pastor gave uh, that woman a big TLC hug. And the woman lifted up her countenance and actually put a smile on her lips. And so he uh, told them to sit down. And they went back. And as they were wrapping up the, uh, the session, uh, they got up and was ready to leave. And the pastor said, wait just a minute. And he went over to uh, the woman and he gave her another big TLC hug. And this time a big smile broke out upon her face. And she was so uplifted and encouraged uh, by that hug. And then he looked to the husband. He said, brother, every day. The guy replied, well, do you want me to come in and bring her in with me? Or do you want to come to the house? <laughs> well, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. So we acknowledge people by name. 
We acknowledge people by embracing. And number three, we acknowledge people by looking them in the eye. Have you ever tried to carry on a conversation? You're in one room and the person you are trying to communicate with is in another room. Folks, that just does not work. That is a very ineffective way of communicating. We need to look people in the eye when we talk with them. You know, it says something when we look people in the eye. It says, I'm interested in you. It says, I care about you. It says, I understand what you're trying to say. It says you are valuable. Listen up, folks. If we are going to give people the AAA treatment, everybody needs it. The first A is we need to acknowledge people. We need to acknowledge people. Number two, there's a second thing we've got to do, and we can learn this also from the Apostle Paul. We've got to learn to appreciate people. You know, when you appreciate something, their value goes up. And when you depreciate something, the value goes down. Look at verse 4 of our text. Paul says, Who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Paul says, I want to give thanks for Priscilla and Aquila. They laid down their lives for me. They labored in my behalf. If you look at verse 6, he says, Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. I want to thank Mary. Look at verse 12. He said, Salute Tryphenum and Tryphosa, who labored in the Lord. Paul was saying, I really appreciate uh, these twin sisters who labored in my behalf. You know what Paul was saying here, folks? Not only am I going to acknowledge people, but number two, I'm going to show appreciation for people and to people. So, how do we give the AAA treatment to people? Number one, we acknowledge them. Number two, we appreciate them. This past week, I went into a rather deep study and uh, I studied about these 27 people that Paul talks about in Romans chapter 16. Now, you've got to understand something. In the culture in that day, the women had no legal standing. They were treated as slaves, which is wrong, by the way. But in that day, that's how the women were treated, like slaves. So over half of these people that Paul addressed, They did nothing to help Paul. They could do nothing to help Paul because they were slaves and women. And you know what? It tells me a lot about how people treat people. Right here it is. It tells a lot about people, how they treat people who can do nothing for them. It says a lot. How they treat people who perhaps their economic status is not where their economic status is. Perhaps their status in every other area of life, educational, financial, or relational, is not equivalent to theirs. But how do they treat people who perhaps many others would consider less than? says a lot about how we treat those people who are less than we are. So let me tell you something, folks. We ought to appreciate all people. We ought to appreciate all people. We ought to appreciate all people. Dell, why do you say that? Well, turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 27. Look what it says. So God created man in his own image. Years ago when we first started to hope, we had a young teenager who walked up to me after the service 
And she says, Dill, I'm a nobody. I said, wait just a minute. You're not a nobody. You are somebody. You are wonderfully and gloriously created in the image of God. So you are a somebody. There's no other person on the face of this earth just like you. You are special. You are unique. You were wonderfully and gloriously created in the image of God. So you are somebody that is special. We need to appreciate all people. Doesn't matter to God if you're wealthy or if you are on welfare. You are wonderfully and gloriously created in the image of God. God created the world, folks. The rocks, the hills, the holes, the birds, the bees, the flowers, the trees. He created everything. That's when God said, as he looked at his creation, this is good. Then he created man and woman. And look what he said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 30. And God saw everything that he had made. This is after he created man and woman. He said, Behold, it is very good. What did God do? Well, this is Scrivener paraphrase here now, folks. God created man. He looked at man and he said, This is not good. I can do better than this. And you know what God did? He created woman! Whoopee! Hallelujah! And then he said, this is very good. How did Paul exemplify his appreciation? How did Paul give people the AAA treatment? He acknowledged people, number one. Number two, he just appreciated folks. He appreciated people. Oh, Mamie Adams, as was her custom, went down to the post office during the Christmas holiday season to buy some stamps to put on her Christmas cards. She stood in a long line. Someone tapped her on the shoulder and they said, uh, Mamie, you don't have to stand in this long line. There's a stamp machine right over there that you can go and buy stamps for your Christmas cards. And Mamie replied, well, that stamp machine won't ask me how I'm doing with my arthritis. People need to be appreciated, folks. We need to tell people how much we appreciate them. If somebody has meant a lot to you, tell them. Tell them how much you appreciate what they have done in and for your own life. Give them a rose while they can still smell it. You say, well, that goes without saying. Well, sad to say, sometimes it does. But tell them, because I believe that appreciation is a very powerful word. I'm not talking about blowing smoke. Uh, I'm not talking about that at all. I don't do that. I'm talking about expressing genuine appreciation to people. Tell them how much you appreciate them. And then, folks, there's an appreciation to, and then there's an appreciation for. It's a powerful expression to express appreciation for people in front of their peers. It's a powerful expression to express appreciation for people in front of their family. You start bragging on your husband, guaranteed, it will get back to him. You start bragging on your wife, guaranteed, it will get back to her. There's an appreciation to, and then there's an appreciation for. But there's a third thing that Paul did as he gave people what they needed, a triple A treatment. Uh, he acknowledged people. He appreciated people. And number three, he affirmed people. Look what he said in verse seven. 
Salute Andronicus and Juna, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Paul was saying, you guys were a big deal to the apostles. And then if you look down at verse 13, he said, Salute Rufus, whom the Lord picked out to be his very own, and also his dear mother. He affirmed Rufus, and he said, by the way, Rufus' mama, she was like a mama to me. You know what Paul understood? Paul understood that people respond to praises. People respond to affirmation. Paul understood everybody wants to be affirmed. Like the little boy asked his dad, Dad, will you play darts with me? I'll throw the darts. And you say, son, that's wonderful. We all like to be affirmed. You know, the Bible says something that we are supposed to do daily, and I bet you nine out of ten of us fail to do this simply because we don't know that we're supposed to do it. Look what it says. Hebrews 3, verse 13. Exhort one another daily. So every day we are supposed to exhort and we are supposed to encourage. And we are supposed to lift one another up. And a good place to start, you know where it is? It's in the home. Good place to start is with your family. Good place to start affirming would be with your husband, with your wife, with your children, with your grandchildren. Because if we are going to give people the AAA treatment, that means affirming people. Because that's what people need, folks. We all need affirmation. We all need encouragement. We all need to be lifted up. Some people, sad to say, they just don't know how to do that. Now, years ago, I used to stand by the back door after the service was over to greet people uh, as they left. Uh, I quit doing that many, many years ago, and a lot of pastors um, that I follow no longer do that. Uh, because sometimes what people say to you as they leave, uh, leaves you wondering just what they meant by what they said. One lady said to her pastor, she said, Pastor, every sermon you preach is better than the next one. So what does she mean by that? I remember one time I was speaking when I first started pastoring as a youth pastor back in Yakima. And I was preaching and the service started at 11 o'clock and it was supposed to end at 12. I went a little over and this lady sitting in the middle of the congregation said, Dell, your time is up. Now, she was a little uh, slow, uh, but uh, she made that comment to me. I always will remember that one. Um, one pastor had this said to him. Uh, Pastor, that was a very warm message that you gave this morning. She said that every Sunday. That was a very warm message that you gave this morning. Finally, the pastor said, I got to figure out what she meant by that. So after the service, she said, ma'am, could I speak to you just for a moment? Yes, pastor, what do you have on your mind? He said, well, I'm kind of curious. What do you mean when you say that was a warm message, and she said, not so hot. <laughs> not so hot. Well, she meant well, I suppose. But uh, everybody needs to be acknowledged, folks. Everybody needs to be appreciated, and everybody needs to be affirmed. I call that, give people what they need, the triple A treatment. The triple A treatment. I conclude my message today by talking about this teacher. This teacher had a class of young students, and she said, I want you to take out a sheet of paper. I want you to write down the names of everyone in this class. And she said, after you write down the names of everybody in this class, leave a space between the names. And she says, this is what I want you to do. 
in the space between the names, I want you to write down every nice thing you can think about about that person. And then the teacher compiled all those papers and she took the information and then she gave it to these uh, individual members. Every nice thing that was said about Mark, she gave it to Mark. Every nice thing that was said about Sally, she gave it to Sally. Every nice thing that was said about Harry, well, she gave it to Harry. She gave it to them on a piece of paper. And then they started saying things like, Oh, I never knew he thought that way about my life. Oh, I didn't even think she liked me. Oh, I did not know she thought I was good in that area. That teacher said, I just did that. And then one day, she heard that the young man in her class, Mark, was killed in military service. And so she went to the funeral. And after the funeral was over, the mother and dad of Mark came up to her and they asked her, are you the teacher that Mark had in school? Are you Mrs. So-and-so? And, -so? and uh, she said, yes, I am. And then uh, this couple said to this teacher, I just want to tell you that when Mark was found dead, in his wallet, he had that piece of paper. And he carried it with him every day of his life. Wow. Every day he carried it with him. And he had it tucked away in his wallet. And as they were telling the teacher about this, a guy by the name of Charlie walked up. And Charlie said, I got mine too. It's in the top desk drawer in my office at, at home. And Marilyn came by and said, you know what? I've kept mine too. It's in my diary. And Chuck came along and said, yeah, I keep mine in my wedding album. And the teacher said, you know what? I guess every one of those students in that class kept them. I guess every student kept that piece of paper. You see, folks, everybody needs affirmation. Sometimes when we are at the lowest of the low, and we are down and so discouraged, and we think nobody loves us, nobody cares about us, that's when someone needs to come alongside of us and lift us up to encourage us, to acknowledge us by name, to show us appreciation for us, and to affirm us. I remember years ago when I left the old denomination that I had been a part of for most of my life. And I lifted the anchor of that denomination and I set my ship out into uncharted waters. I had no idea where God was going to lead me then at that time. And I became friends with a pastor in Portland of a large church. His name was Pastor Dale Galloway. He had this large church, I think, at that time, about 5,000 people. And yet, because I went down to his, his leadership conferences, we developed a relationship. And so I told him about how I was treated in my old denomination at that time. Told him the whole story. And then he said, Dale, as he put his hand on my shoulder, he said, we believe in you. We believe in you. Why don't you start a new church? And that affirmation and that encouragement by Pastor Galloway helped me get back up on my feet and walk the faith as God moved us with this vision 
to start this church, New Hope, 33 years ago. We had our first service at the Governor House downtown Olympia. People need to be acknowledged, folks. People need to be appreciated. People need to be affirmed. Why do you say that, Dale? What's your motivation for saying that, Will? I got to looking at Romans 5, verse 8. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Sometimes when we sing, worthy is the Lamb, even when I hear it sung, worthy is the Lamb, I don't know about you, but I get very emotional. That song demonstrates God's love for you and me. While I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. I thought about 1 John 4, 9. We love him because he first loved us. So, why should I acknowledge people? Why should I appreciate people? Why should I affirm people? Well, stop and think about it. Isn't that what the Lord did for you and me? Wasn't Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, the initiator in this whole relationship that we have with Him today? Wasn't He the one who stepped out and loved us when we were unlovable? Wasn't He the one who initiated the pursuit of our lives even when we didn't care at that time? So why should not I incorporate into my life that same attitude I show toward other people? Because people need to be acknowledged. People need to be appreciated. And people need to be affirmed. So your assignment for this week, go out and give someone what they need. Triple A treatment. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful week. Savior say that strength indeed is small Child of weakness watch and pray And find in me thine all in all Jesus paid it all And all to him I owe Sin I left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow Lord, now indeed I find My power in Thine alone Can change the leper's spots And melt the heart of Paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow.
shall still repeat.